Hello my lovelies, welcome back. Today's video is a tag video and it's the British tag and I was tagged by the wonderful Jay. Instead of putting all my details in the description box, this time I'm going to put all the details of where you can find the lovely Jay. Um, I have to say I haven't known Jay very long at all. We got to know each other through beauty blogging and he is one of life's good eggs. He is so supportive, he's so positive, enthusiastic, um, just a wonderful, wonderful human being who isn't afraid to put somebody else before himself, which I've seen a few times where he will bring up somebody else's blog or say how much he's enjoyed somebody else's work and it's such a rare thing. We are quite a selfish um, we are very selfish human beings these days and generally everybody's out for themselves and I have to say Jay is one of the most generous souls I've come across and it's an absolute pleasure to know him and I feel very honoured that he tagged me for the British tag video and here it is. I've actually been very very old fashioned and British and I've written it down in my book rather than using my iPad, I was very impressed with that. I do like stationery and pens and things so it wasn't too much of a, a trauma to do it but I'm going to read the questions so forgive me as I look down and let's begin question one how many cups of tea do you drink and how many sugars okay I'm going to blast this one out of the water I actually do not drink tea I used to drink it all the time and gradually I went off it and started drinking coffee and that's my drink of choice when I drank tea, I drank it black because I do not like the smell of milk in a hot milky, ooh, hot milky tea. Just the smell of milk. I have my coffee black and the only time I actually have milk is with cereal. I can't drink a glass of milk because I do not like the smell or taste of it. However, in cereal, it smells and tastes different, I think, and that's where I get my calcium from. But I do not drink tea. However, if I did, and when I did, it was two sugars. Two sugars in my tea, two sugars in my coffee. I have a sweet tooth, and I don't think that's gonna change now. So there you go. I'm not saying I won't go back to a cup of tea. I like the odd herbal tea. I like a little bit of licorice and peppermint. But yeah, just standard tea at the moment is not my drink at all. Question two, favourite part of a roast dinner? Oh, it's my most favourite meal. If it, if it was my last day on earth and I had a roast dinner, I would be so happy. I love it. I love cooking a roast dinner. I make my own Yorkshire puddings, roast potatoes. I do homemade gravy. Love it. And to be perfectly honest, there isn't a particular part that I prefer. Although I would give a damn good fight for the last Yorkshire pudding, it must be said. Number three, favourite dunking biscuits. This made me smile because um, my mum was very strict when it came to manners. Um, not, you know, horribly shouty strict, but she brought me up to have very good table manners and dunking biscuits for her was common. So I was brought up never to dunk a biscuit in a hot drink <laughs> it just makes me laugh because i'm just thinking what on earth you're all thinking when i've said that um however i have dunked a biscuit obviously um but i must say that because i'm a coffee drinker it tends to be the hard biscotti italian biscuits and you dunk them in your coffee and they just soften down so you can eat them if it came to tea, it would probably just be a normal digestive biscuit, which you have to judge it really carefully, because when it's gone, it's slopping around in the bottom of your tea mug. Not nice. But because I'm a coffee drinker, I'm going to have to go with biscotti biscuits. Number four, favourite quintessentially British pastime. Um... It's not necessarily a pastime, but it's the first thing I thought of. And I think because I live by the sea, I see this all the time. And I know people do it in other countries as well, but there's two things. The first thing is the British are very good at promenading on an evening when they're at the seaside. And to be fair, probably 51 weeks of the year, they don't do that. You know, you go home, you have your dinner, you watch telly and you go to bed. 
but something happens when people come on holiday for a week to the seaside and they have their dinner and they suddenly have the need to go for a walk by the sea and yeah of course you do you know you're in a lovely environment you want to see every bit of it and the sunsets are amazing but it is quite and i know a lot of countries do it italy i've been to italy and people dress up and promenade so i can't claim it solely for the british but it is quite amusing to see it the second thing and i do not know if other people do this in other countries so i'm claiming it as quintessentially british that people drive to beautiful places absolutely stunning views and they sit in their car and just look at the view out of the car window they don't get out they don't have a walk they just sit there and that's it and then they drive away I have no idea why um, but it happens an awful lot do let me know if you're from elsewhere than the UK and this happens but that for me is an extremely British thing that you see these cars parked up and there's just gorgeous views and people are just sat in the cars just looking at the view so I think it's kind of a pastime but there you go number five favorite word um, I don't know if it's a British word but I like it which is eclectic I just think it's a wonderful and you understand it eclectic it's not this it's not that it's a bit of everything and a person who's eclectic I just think it's great because they don't follow a particular style or fashion they pick and mix and I like that I like people that don't feel they have to follow a particular route they're themselves and I respect that. I think it takes a lot of guts not to follow the pack and be a sheep. So eclectic for me is one of my favorite words. Number six, Cockney rhyming slang. Um, yeah, I, I don't know whether people think that we talk like that all the time, sort of Dick Van Dyke, Mary, hello Mary Poppins, because we don't. Um, but there is a lot of Cockney rhyming slang that just occurs naturally um, in conversation. I did write some down um, off the top of my head that just sort of filtered in because I knew when I filmed nothing would come to me. So I have apples and pears, which of course are stairs. Hank Marvin, love that one. I'm Hank Marvin, starving. Ruby Murray, curry. Rosie Lee, a cup of tea. And you're having a giraffe you're having a laugh and I have to say we say that quite a lot to each other you're having a giraffe mate um that's so bad I do apologize that's really bad accent my other half um actually does one of the best Ray Winston accents but the only thing is he does this thing where he goes into Ray Winston and that's it if you go out for the evening he stays in character yes he does the best Ray Winston and would have been perfect to do the Cockney rhyming slang but I apologize for my appalling attempt number seven favorite sweet um I have a sweet tooth to be fair but as soon as I saw this question I immediately thought about the sweets I loved as a child and I adored refreshers which were like chewy sweets but they had like the powder in the middle and drumsticks which were lollies but they had the most gorgeous fruity taste and I love them and if I see them now I still buy a bag and um, just chew away although currently those of you who know from my Twitter account, I am having a lot of problems with my jaw um, and teeth. It's not very pleasant and luckily the pain isn't all the time, but chewy sweets and hard foods and things are a no-go at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm okay, but it's not very nice when it, when it hurts. So no drumsticks for Rouge Pout for a while. Okay, number eight, what would your pub be called? Um, the first thing that came into my head, and nothing else has, is sup and grub. So drink and eat. But sup and grub, it's just quick, you know, sup and grub. It doesn't sound great, I suppose, but that's it. That's the best I can offer you. Good job I don't work in marketing, isn't it? Number nine, number one British person. Now, I found this really difficult because I suppose the obvious would be to look at the royal family. And, yeah, so, no. Um, 
to be honest, I really struggled because there are so many people out there that sort of start filtering through and you think, oh, and then, oh, and there's actors and humanitarians and people who probably do a lot of good that you don't even know about that really should be the number one British person. Um, but I have to say, I was sort of thinking about it. Um, for me, probably somebody very wordy. Uh, and there were a few other people and then I realised that they weren't actually British so that went out the window basically so I don't know it, it changes favourite shop and favourite restaurant um, gosh that's really hard favourite restaurant is very very difficult because I'm quite easy going when it comes to food um, I don't need you know posh service and posh cutlery and a fancy name to be impressed I just like decent food and if I can go out and just sit on a bench and eat some nice fish and chips I'm very happy so there wasn't really a restaurant um, other than I have to say the quintessentially British Betty's Tea Rooms which you will find in York and Harrogate and they are amazing traditional high tea cake stands wonderful so betty's tea rooms for the sort of restaurant side of it if you go to york or harrogate do take the time to go um favorite shop that's so difficult you kind of think marks and spencers have been around a long time looking at selfridges but i think just for the whole look um and ambiance of the place liberties i just think liberties is just one of the most beautiful places and again it fits under the heading of eclectic so liberties for me number 11 what british song pops into your head um i think i went super sort of british in a way and for me land of hope and glory i just think it's such a rousing it's such rousing music and if you watch last night of the proms i i just defy anybody not to be moved when you hear everybody come together and just sing that and i really truly believe that land of hope and glory should be the national anthem i really do with no disrespect to the royal family god save the queen is you know it just doesn't do it does it guys land of hope and glory i absolutely yeah it's the just wonderful i can't say anything else i hear it and whenever i hear it i, I do actually cry at last night of the problems it moves me so much when i hear that number 12 marmite um is it a love it or hate it <laughs> marmite is i suppose the uk's version of vegemite it's quite strong in flavor and it is a love-hate thing. I do like it. I don't like a lot, I have to say. The merest amount, and I like it too much, and it just burns my mouth. And those are the 12 British tag questions. Um, I tag everybody else. I'm not gonna name specific people, because I do lists, and then I suddenly realize that I leave somebody out that I really don't want to leave out, and I feel so guilty about it. And I don't want anybody to, to feel I've forgotten them. Uh, thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed that and do let me know if you'd like to see some vlogging from rouge pout it will be yeah sort of hit and miss i'm not saying it's going to be every week because as i've said before i really don't do that much and i don't know if you really want to go to the supermarket with me maybe you do or i don't know go to the opticians i mean maybe you want to come to the opticians with me best of luck with that one but yes i just thought it might be nice to have a little bit of normal life as well but do let me know if you'd be interested in that and i'll leave it there take care everybody and thank you for watching of course <laughs>